good morning to all of you uh, the objective the topic for today is univariate forecasting <clears throat> this is the data uh, which we will use in today's session so i collected the monthly data from september 2007 and uh, data i collected up to june 2022 you can see that so data is collected up to june 22 and rest of the time is for forecasting so this time we keep for forecasting purpose i want to forecast the value of nifty till december 2030 so on this data set we are going to work <clears throat> so theory is less in today's session practical is more so you can see in this line there are in this graph there are red line green line blue line black line so the all these are the forecasted values this is the actual behavior of the series and these are the forecasted values for the next 8 years so how we can do the forecasting so today we will learn and you can see there are four type of forecasting this is trend forecasting and these three are curvy linear forecasting exponential forecasting and the arima forecasting so let's do one by one <clears throat> so these are the broad topics that we will discuss in today's session the first type of forecasting that i am going to show you is trend forecasting we have studied the trend in our previous session how to analyze the trend so when you run this regression model yt is the time series alpha is intercept beta is the coefficient of the trend this is simple time et is the error term if we run this equation the beta will tell you the trend and if beta is found to be significant it means there is a significant trend in the series and then we can use this equation to for further forecast similarly in curvilinear trend we use the term time square up to simple time it is trend and if we add the time square into the equation this beta 2 will capture the curve curvy linear trend if beta 2 is positive it means upward sloping curve and if beta 2 is negative it means curve is moving down so beta 2 will tell you what is the nature of the curve in case of positive beta the curve will come like this in case of negative beta the curve will move like this and whether it is significant or not it will tell you whether the curvy linear trend is significant or not so we will do the curvy linear trend forecasting also the third forecasting we will do is exponential growth forecasting in exponential growth forecasting we will take the log of y alpha plus beta into time everything is same as in trend equation the only thing is that we apply the log of dependent variable log of dependent variable is known as semi log model because we are taking the log for dependent variable and not log in right hand side in this equation beta will represent the growth rate if your if your data is monthly data then beta is representing the monthly growth rate multiplied by 12 it is annual growth rate so beta is representing the growth rate and this equation can be used for for this kind of forecasting exponential growth forecasting so let me complete the three forecasting first then we will move to the arima so i am going to open this series in eviews 
So I'm just copy this and I'm going to open this series from any views. Just paste. Okay, file open. So this is the series that we are going to use. And uh, Nifty is the series. Software automatically considers this as a monthly data. You can see that 2007 month 9, 2010 month 10. So we are having the data from September 2007. And we are having the data up to June 2022. And rest of the series is for forecasting. So first we are going to do the trend forecasting. So Nifty is my dependent variable. Time is my independent variable. Open as a equation. When you run this equation, we run the equation for the sample period of this. So period of sample, you can see here, it is September 2007 to June 2022 because we are having the data up to June 2022. So this you have to consider. Now, when you run, okay. So this uh, C is constant and 64, you can see 64. 64 is representing the trend. It means on an average, Nifty increases by 64 points every month in the last uh, seven, around 25 years. In the last 25 years, the Nifty on an average increases by 64 points every month. It is significant. R square is 85%. So now we want to do the forecasting. Just click on this forecast. You can see this option forecast. Click on forecast. The new city's name is trend. Trend forecasting. So I am... Uh, giving the name to the new series trend forecasting and forecast sample. Now we are having this forecast sample. We are going to do the forecasting for uh, July 2022 to December 2030 up to, so we are going to do the forecasting from July onwards. And we don't want actual values in the forecasting series. So these changes you have to do. The forecasting sample is for future. Don't click on this, uncheck this and click OK. Cross it. OK, now this is the trend forecasting. So let's see how the forecast series looks like. So I'm selecting the original value of 50, trend forecasting, open as a group. In forecasted series, up to 2006, there is no value. And these are the forecasted values. Let's plot the graph. So you can see that the, the, the red line is showing you the forecasted value of the series. So the, the, this line is showing you uh, what is the average value of the Nifty in coming days, how the Nifty should move. And this drop is showing you there is a correction required in this series. Because in, in finance, there is a concept called irrational exuberance. Let me write the word. So what this irrational exuberance say that the market may move up in long term, it is fine, but it will move like this. So you must know what is the average value of the series and when there is a possibility of 
bounce back and when there is a possibility of drop down so this can be also identified by this concept so this is called trend forecasting after trend forecasting now i am going to do curvy linear trend forecasting so again nifty time i am opening as the equation and adding one more term time square so i am adding one more independent variable in this equation and the sample is <clears throat> june 22 because we are having the data up to this period and i added time square a new variable for capturing the curvilinear trend the r square is 92 which is more than r square of the trend equation for the trend equation it was 85% it is 92% so not a problem and you can also see that time square is significant the time square is found to be significant so we will take this time square <clears throat> it means curvilinear trend is much better as compared to simple trend and we want to do the forecasting for nifty using this equation again go to forecast now i am saving the new series in the name of uh forecasting curve for curvy linear forecasting the sample should be from july 2022 up to december 2030 and check this okay now this is the way nifty should move in the next 8 years and we can see the graph separately also okay let me minimize this or okay so if we want to see the curvilinear forecasting select curve forecasting select nifty and plot it so you can see that this is the uh, if nifty because nifty have shown curvilinear movement in the past 25 years so in future if nifty will continue its past behavior this is the expected values of nifty in the next 8 years so approximately it will it will touch 35000 in 2030 and this is more accurate as compared to simple trend forecasting because we have seen that the r square of curvilinear forecasting is 92% as compared to the 85% in case of trend forecasting so this is our simple forecasting curvilinear forecasting now we are moving to the third case uh nifty time open as a group i mean open as a equation now i am taking the log i am taking the log of nifty the sample period is again sample period means the period which you are using for making the model and forecast sample means the sample where you are going to forecast so this is our sample for the model and uh, it is again 89% not very strong because curvilinear trend is more accurate it with 92% r square it is 89 but it is still better than the trend forecasting <clears throat> after this we can go to the growth rate is 0.007 0.8% so nifty have a growth rate of monthly growth rate of 0.78% it is approximately 8% 78 you if you round off it is a, on, almost 8% 0.8% and 8.8 multiplied by 12 because it is a monthly growth rate if you multiply by the 12 you will get the annual growth rate so 12 multiplied by 8 you you so approximately 9% 9 or 10% so this is the growth rate of nifty in the past 25 years 
and on the basis of this growth rate we are going to forecast so we believe that if the india keep this growth rate constant in future also so what could be the value of nifty in next 8 years so we go to the forecast the forecast sample is uh july 2022 up to december 2030 uncheck this and it is growth forecasting so the series the name of the new series forecasted series is growth and okay so let's see the picture in uh, graph nifty and growth so you can open both the series and uh, make the graph so you can see that the the uh, if nifty will keep the 9% growth rate or 0.78% growth rate monthly the nifty will move like this so it is approximately it will be 35000 in the next 8 years if the nifty will continue its growth rate as in last 25 years so these see forecastings are very simple and uh, you know that if you just know how to keep the data these three forecasting are very simple just matter of 20 15 minutes so we have done uh, three forecasting one is the trend forecasting curve curvy linear forecasting growth forecasting and this is nifty so if i plot in total so the three forecasting looks like this and you can also write the uh, whenever you make this plot you can also write that at the r square is 85% the 89% and the red is 92% so we are having a uh, more explanatory power in case of red however the end is same in both the cases both growth forecasting and curvilinear forecasting is representing the this value which is around 35000 <clears throat> we are doing this exercise from the last 8 years so 8 year back or 5 uh, year back we forecasted the value in 2022 and now we are going to do the forecasting in uh, 22 for the next 8 years when in 2016 i was teaching this is this in a class and at that time nifty was at around uh, 10000 and when i show them that nifty will reach uh, 18000 in 2022 so nobody can believe it but now this kind of trend forecasting and the curvilinear forecasting will tell you that how the series will move in the next time period is your choice you can calculate you can forecast for 20 years 30 years 40 years as per your choice okay so basically uh, the average for this value is the average value that nifty should have in next 8 years so there are different time periods of the forecasting if you are doing the forecasting for the next year it is called static forecasting if you do the forecasting for the long period of time it is called dynamic forecasting so after learning these three basic type of forecasting now we are moving to the complicated forecasting that is called arima forecasting so you have to now be attentive to understand the concept <clears throat> now we are taking i'm um, first of all i will explain you the basic concept of arima and then we will move to the practice session so time series forecasting and it's still univariate can also be done on the basis of two concepts one is called past momentum you may heard about the momentum trading momentum in the series and if any series is having some momentum also known as inertia in science we call it inertia if 
some series is having some inertia momentum it can be this information can be used to forecast and this concept is called auto regressive auto regressive means the past behavior is important to forecast its future value so on the basis of the momentum we make this series this equation that yt can be forecasted on the basis of its previous value so yt minus 1 is the lag 1 value of y lag 1 means one day before or one month before y t minus 2 is two time period before p time period before so you have to consider the past values of y to forecast the next value because we are running a regression model dependent variable is today and the past behavior is the independent variable so this series is called auto regressive so we are having many auto regressive series like gauge gauge so in this case we are taking the past volatility in the equation in second case we are analyzing the sentiment sentiment of the mood so let me explain the concept of sentiment that is something new and uh, this concept is quite important suppose the value of today is 100 so as you any financial asset and the today the value of this financial asset is 100 and we are expecting it 100 let's say 2 it is the expected value of the asset now it will move to the 90 also it will move to the 110 also if negative information will come the price will decrease if positive information will come the price will increase so we are having two cases case 1 and case 2 in case 1 the error will be equal to actual value minus predicted value which is 90 minus 102 in second case error will be 110 minus 102 so in first case error is negative in second case error is positive so as i already told you that uh, the error term is having two two cases one is the sign and one is the size the minus is representing that uh, there is some strong negative information in the market there is some strong negative news in the market because of which the market is down and 12 means how much the market is reacting to the negative news minus 12 because it is quite higher so it means the magnitude of negative information is very high so this is the meaning of error term so in whole time series equation the error is representing the shock the error is known as shock shock means something unexpected so some unexpected news comes as a as a result of which the market respond to it positively or negatively now the question is that do you think the shock will absorbed in only one day so we assume that this yt is influenced by this shock the et minus 1 is the shock on the previous day whatever news comes so previous day error of the previous day so do you think the error of the previous day will also influence why the answer is yes why because in human being it is a nature that some human beings are uh, react quickly right and some human beings are very slow they give the reaction but slowly so suppose this is the population this population react on the same day there must be some population which react after two days 
and there must be some population which react after three days. So reaction comes in sequence, and this is because of uh, this is called uh, irrational. And one is information asymmetry. There is a term called information asymmetry. What is the meaning of information asymmetry? There are two meanings of information asymmetry. Number one, everybody is not having the same information at every point of time. Some investors are well informed. Some info, some investors are not informed. They will get the information after some time. So because of this information asymmetry, some investors who, which are well informed, they react quickly. And some investors which are which will get the information delay in late, they will respond after two days, three days, four days. So we believe that the response from the investors comes in sequence. So that's why we make this equation. That's yt is equal to et. Beta 2, uh, this is et minus 1, this is et minus 2 plus beta 3. Et minus three. So, the error term of yesterday also influences the next moment. The error term, maybe which comes two days back, which also influences today moment. Similarly, the error term which comes three days three days before or three months before is also influencing the moment. And it's all because of information asymmetry. And the second meaning of asymmetry is that. Some investors are proactive. Some investors are passive investors. So they react very late. So that's why because of the different concept, uh, different, uh, different results of information asymmetry, the error term will have a impact for many days. This is the concept of, this concept is known as moving average. This concept is also known as moving average. And this concept is uh, very, very important in time series because once there is a large crash in the market, it will continue for more time, some more time. When there is a huge jump in the market, it will continue for some time. <clears throat> and especially in, in case of crashes, uh, crashes will continue for some time. So whenever there's a crash comes to the market, it will continue for some time because it is a feature of negative information to have more contagion effect as compared to positive news. So this concept we will use in case of moving average. So we are having uh, two cases which we incorporate in ARIMA model is incorporating the past information of the series and the past error term of the equation. So this concept is called AR concept. This concept is called MA concept, moving average. And if you combine both the terms, it is called RMA, ARMA. AR is for autoregressive. MA stands for moving average. And we, when we combine these two terms, it is called ARMA term. Or I, we then add it. I means a stationary series. We want I equal to zero. So when I equal to zero, the model is called ARIMA forecasting model. Before moving to the model, I am going to explain uh, AR MA series first. So what are the features of AR series, MA series? So let me take a very simple example. There are two types of people around you. You can observe this. Some people are very moody, moody kind of people. So some person are very moody. They changes their behavior very quickly. Right? So sometimes they are very, very sad. Sometimes they are very, uh, very happy. So their behavior changes very soon. So these are called moody people. 
and some people are stable people so almost every time they remain they keep their behavior similar so similarly there are two type of time series some time series changes very fast like stock market and some time series don't change frequently the day changes very less like gold price uh inflation rate interest rate gdp iip there not there is not much crashes in this so they they move steadily when they moving down they move down for some time when they move up they move up for some time not zigzag motion so first of all we have to analyze the what is the nature of the series whether it is a stable series or whether it is a moody series moody series means any time up any time down a stable series means when we are when it is moving up it will move up for some time and when it is moving down it is moving down for some time so auto regressive concept is more meaningful with stable series so when you when you think the series is stable a stable kind of series it means auto regressive component is a major component in the series similarly in auto regressive series which is a stationary which is a uh, momentum series inertia series stable series you can call it with any name the yt can be predicted on the basis of their previous behavior if you know that yesterday the person was sad so the possibility is very high that to today he is also sad so yt depends upon the previous behavior of the series so this is called auto regressive process on the other side we are having the moving average yt depends upon the error term of previous day error term of two days back like this this is ma model now before moving to the arima model i just want to show you the how the nature of the series so it is a quite uh, complicated simulation but if you understand the simulation you uh, you will understand the those concept which cannot be explained by any book so now i am showing you this simulation for saving my time i already make this file but let me explain how we are simulating the series this is a white white noise white noise you know that a series which is having the zero mean constant variance random behavior so random series with zero mean and one standard deviation is a white noise the definition of white noise is any stationary series with zero mean and constant variance is white noise so we develop the white noise by this function random walk random walk you know that the equation of random walk is y t plus et so lag one means y t minus 1 plus white noise random walk with drift so we use this series for simulation of ar1 ar2 ar3 ma1 ma2 ma3 so now i am going to show you this series <clears throat> similarly if you see this ma2 like for example so white noise plus white noise of the uh, white noise we are considering as the error terms you know that the error terms are white noise always so 0.4 into white noise of the yesterday lag one means yesterday lag two means day before yesterday so we assume that some information is coming from the lag one and some information is coming from lag two similarly when we are simulating the ma3 series so it is white noise coming from lag 1 lag 2 lag 3 okay just i am showing you the simulation once again uh this is my let me open a new file because this this concept will be helpful in many other models so that's why i am in incorporating this white noise so how to develop the white noise so i am applying a function 
norm inverse it will give me the values the x values with random function mean 0 and constant variance 1 the standard deviation is 1 so after this you will get the z scores which comes in between plus 3 and minus 3 so let me generate for 500 uh, approximately 500 values so it is a white noise the completely random error term so this is the best way to report a white noise and taking the three decimal point okay now i am showing you the random box so the equation of random walk is you have seen earlier that random walk yt is equal to yt minus 1 plus et so this is the equation of the random walk okay let's say the yes any day value is 1 now yt minus 1 is 1 plus it it is the error term so white noise is the proxy of the error term so i am taking error term as white noise so you can assume any value of today let's say 5 rupees and just plot it so your random walk will come so let's see how it look like so you can see that the this is a movement random random movement if you press f9 you can generate the different simulations of our random walk so these are the different possible movements of a random walk so i hope random walk is clear okay now i am going to show you the other series random walk with drift drift with small momentum so let's say the price value is 5 and uh, i am just adding a momentum of 0.05 equal to so what is the equation let me write the equation first random walk with drift is equal to alpha plus yt minus 1 plus et this is the equation of random walk with drift so let's say drift is 0.05 this is the drift plus previous value is this plus the error term error term is this so this is my equation random walk with drift and let's plot it so you can see that the there is a possibility of upside movement and if we so most of the time this series is moving upside because we give very small drift so that's why small movement you can see and if i give large drift like 0.1 so you can then you can see the upside movement is quite high so you can see that now this series is moving towards upside most of the time this is the impact of drift now the next series i am going to show you ar1 series ar uh, ar2 series ar3 series so similarly we can go for ar4 ar5 and so on but what is the meaning of this ar so i am writing the equation uh ar1 ar2 and ar3 so ar1 equal to the yt minus 1 multiplied by 0.8 
because we are not considering the unit root, we are considering the beta is equal to 8 plus ET. So this is AR1 series. Similarly, yt minus 1 multiplied by uh, 0.4 plus yt minus 2 multiplied by 0.3 plus et. This is AR2. This series is giving 40% information. Second lag is giving 30% information. We are giving more weight to the latest value. Similarly, we can write AR3 yt minus 1 multiplied by 0.3 yt minus 2 multiplied by 0.25 plus yt minus 3 multiplied by 0.15 plus et. So now I'm going to generate because this is a pure simulation and the advantage of simulation is to understand the basics. So now I'm going to simulate the series. So a starting value is I'm taking 5. Okay. Now this value is equal to 0 0.5, 5 rupees, yt minus 1 multiplied by 0 0.8 and plus y twice. This is AR1 series. The information is only coming from the 1 lakh. Okay, now in this case, I am taking the AR2 series. The first one is uh, just like AR1 multiplied by 0 0.8 plus et but in second case i am running the two values this is yt minus 1 multiplied by 0.4 plus because it is ar2 so we are taking two lakh this is second lakh multiplied by 0.3 and plus et this is ar2 series Similarly, we, we can go for AR3. Now, now here I'm not going to AR3, I'm going to MA1. Because I, I, I expect you to, that you understand this concept. Now, how to generate M1? MA1 means the error term. The series is affected by the error term. Equal to today error term plus 0.8 multiplied by previous error term. So if, if you want to see the equation, this is equation is 0 0.8 multiplied by ET minus one plus ET. This is MA1. Similarly, I will develop MA2, 0 0.4 into ET minus one, 0 0.3 into ET minus two plus ET. So we can generate MA1 and MA2 series. This is MA2 series. So we will generate from here. This is ET minus 1 multiplied by 0 0.4 plus ET minus 2, two days back, multiplied by 0 0.3 and plus two days at a term. So this is called MA2 series. So in this way, we can simulate the AR1 and MA1 series. Now I'm closing this, not saving it. I already saved it into another name. So I already created this file, AR MA simulation, which I give you, you can see the formulas from here. Now what I'm doing, I'm going to open this series in eViews and want to show you something. So I'm going to open this, uh, the simulated file. Okay, so you can see that the, the, we are having AR1, AR2, AR3, MA1, MA2, MA3. So now what you need to do, you need to plot each series, like for example, AR1. How this series looks like. So this is the kind of AR1 series. And if you plot the chorelogram of it. Okay, now I'm going to show you something which is very, very important. 
So we are having a graph. This is called AR correlogram. This is called autocorrelation and partial auto partial correlation. So what is the meaning of autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation? Let me explain. And arima cannot be understood. We can we cannot understand the arima without understanding this concept. So just give me some attention. Okay, so I'm going to explain you this, this result. Suppose you are having a series yt, yt minus 1, yt minus 2, yt minus 3 and so on. Now I'm writing this series from yt minus 1. Okay, so if you ca calculate the correlation between original series and lag one series, this is lag one series, this is lag two series. The correlation, this correlation is representing this correlation between this and this. This second correlation is representing the correlation between this and this. So correlation between yt and yt minus one is called correlation at lag one. Correlation between yt and y minus yt minus two, it's correlation at lag two and so on. So if you see this series, the only one spike is found to be significant in partial correlation. Now, what is partial correlation? Partial correlation is the correlation between yt and any lag after controlling the intermediate lags. The let's say if yt is correlated with yt minus one, yt minus one is also correlated with yt minus two. yt minus two is also correlated with yt minus three. So this, this is a chain. Now, if I want to see correlation between yt and yt minus two, you need to remove the effect of this. If you remove the effect of this intermediate, this is called partial collision. Partial collision means after removing the effect of intermediate series, whatever is the correlation left is called partial collision. And the correlation between yt and yt minus 2 without removing it is autocorrelation. After removing partial autocorrelation. So I hope you understand the concept. Now see carefully. How many spikes are significant in AR1? Only one. If I click on AR2 series, now tell me how many spikes are significant. So you can tell me how many spikes are significant, two. So when two spikes are significant, it means the series is AR2 series. Similarly, if I click on AR3, and I'm plotting the correlogram. Now tell me how many spikes are significant in the partial correlation, three. So the answer is that if you have any series and there are three spikes significant, it means this is AR3 series. If two spikes are significant, it means there are two series. If only one spike is significant in partial collision, it is AR, AR1. So how many AR, the question is that, how many AR terms we will include in the ARIMA forecasting? So answer you will get from the correlogram. Okay, so in correlogram, in partial collision, so my conclusion is that if I see the partial correlation, if only one spike is there, it is AR1. If two spikes are significant, this is AR2. If three spikes is significant, it is AR3. If four spikes are significant, then AR4. So how many spikes are significant here in partial correlation will tell you that how many AR terms you have to include in the ARIMA forecasting. Now let's move to the MA. It is MA series. And let's move to the correlogram. Now, now you can see that this partial correlation is not meaningful for me. Oh, this part is important. Autocorrelation, only one spike. 
So how many MA terms we have to include, how many error terms we have to include will be decided on the basis of autocorrelation. So only one spike is telling you this is MA1 series. Okay, now let's move to the MA2. Hologram. Now how many series are significant here? So this series is MA2 AR1 basically, but only two terms of MA and one term of AR, MA2 AR, AR1. So in this way, we decide that how many MA and AR terms we have to include. So let me go one more MA3, Chorogram. So you can see that there are three series significant in this. So how many MA terms you have to include? Three. So this autocorrelation will tell you that how many error terms we have to include in the model. Partial autocorrelation will tell you how many AR terms we have to include in the model. So like this, we decide AR terms and MA terms. So ARIMA forecasting is also represented by the term called PDQ. PDQ. P means how many AR terms you are going to include in the series. D means uh, it is always zero. It is assumed to be zero because D means no differencing should be required to make it stationary. If you are going to ARIMA forecasting, D must be zero means stationary must be stationary. And uh, how many AR terms you are going to include is P. How many MA terms you are going to include is MA. AR is decided by partial correlation. And MA is decided by autocorrelation. Autocorrelation. The, this important thing you need to remember. So how many P, DQ, how many P and how many Q we have to incorporate in ARIMA is decided by correlogram. So this is very, very important to explain the ARIMA forecasting. So assuming that you understood the concept of AR and MA, AR means the momentum and MA means the error term, impact of the news. Now we are, we are going to combining them. So let's go back to the PPT. <clears throat> so I uh, simulated all the terms, AR1 series, AR2 series, MA1, two, MA1, MA2. These are the idealist, idealistic series. And they are having very clear partial correlation and the autocorrelation. But in practical, we never have these clear terms. We are having the mixed series. So we have to analyze the all the things like a, AR process have uh, autocorrelation is dying and number of non-zero point means how many spikes are significant is AR order. How many spikes are significant in autocorrelation? It means MA order. And if both are significant, then it is called ARMA process. Ideal conditions I have shown you. But in practical, we are having the mixed series. So we have to count how many AR values are significant, how many MA values are significant. So after that, we will discuss the, we will design the ARIMA model. So ARIMA model looks like this. P and Q. P and Q means the number of AR terms. Number of AR terms means number of past terms. And Q means number of error terms. So how many past terms, how many error terms we are including? is known as ARMA process. So like in this case, we are YT minus one, YT minus two, YT minus P, UT minus one, UT minus two, these are the error terms. So ARIMA forecasting model can be written by this. Okay. So this is ARIMA. Now how we proceed in ARIMA forecasting? First of all, we have to identify that how many AR terms should be included. How many MA terms should be included? Then we go to the model. Then we do some diagnostic testing. And then we are going to forecasting. So this is the simple process of ARIMA. The identification term is basically 
the how many AR and MA terms we are going to include. This is called identification. Then estimation, we will run the estimation model. In model testing, we will do some uh, testing whether the model is good or not. <coughs> we analyze the residuals of the forecasted model. <clears throat> because if the forecasting model is good, the error term should not have any information. So we have to check whether the residual is a white noise or not. <clears throat> error term sh should be a white noise. Then, then we are having some information criteria like AIC, BIC. Th th these values should be minimum values among all the models. So I will show you how to do all these things. Now, if I ask you, if you have this kind of model, so can you tell me that which is this series? AR term is, autocorrelation is declining. Only one significant spike here. So it is a pure AR term. Similarly, if you see this series, So this series is basically, okay, it is moving. Number one. So this is AR2 series. Two significant spike in partial correlation and auto correlation is just declining. So it is a pure AR2 series. Now, if you, if you see this series, it is pure MA1 series. Only one spike in auto correlation and partial auto correlation is declining. This series is again MA1 series. Partial correlation is having many significant, but only one significant in auto correlation. So it is a pure AR1 series, MA1 series. This series is MA2 series, only two spikes are significant in MA. So in this case, both series are moving down. So it is R1 series. So there are different possibilities we have to see. Now in all these possibilities, we have to find out that which kind of series it is, how many A atoms, how many M atoms we have to consider. So this we have to find out. Okay. Now then we have run the model. Let's rest of the things I will show you in e-views. So this is our Nifty. So first of all, we have to check whether the Nifty is a unit root series or not. So whenever you do ARIMA, first of all, you have to ensure that the series is stationary. I know that this is not stationary, so I have to check whether the series is stationary after taking the D log or not. So I am generating the series. Nifty return equal to d log of nifty so i'm just trying to take the d log and sample i can take only up to 22 zero 06 because after that we don't have the values so we have now nifty return and Confirming that whether it is stationary or not now. And now it is stationary. So you can see that after taking the D log, the series becomes stationary. Fine. Then go to the Corlogram. So in Corlogram, the actually the, the series is coming very different. The ideal series comes very clear and uh, the practical series comes very different. So only fourth spike is found to be significant, or nothing else. So it is an indication that you can take or go to up to fourth level. So now I'm going to make the model. Some hidden try we have to do here also. So D log nifty. So I am taking AR1 and MA1. So first let's start with this. Sample model, model I am making up to 22, 06. And okay. 
So you can see that both error emit terms are significant, but I have to add constant also. Constant must come. So both error term and MA term are found to be significant. So it means we can take it. And one thing you have to note down, this AIC value is minus 2.6745. If this value come down, it then it's always better. Now I'm running, I'm going to the estimate. Whenever you want, want to go back, you go to click on the estimate. So I am adding one more thing, AR2 and MA2. And this is minus 2.674. 2.76, it is decreasing, so it is good. And uh, MA2 is also significant. And then AR2 is also significant. So there are many permutation and combination that we have to try. And uh, they may be insignificant because of the multicollinearity issue because uh, in Arima, multicollinearity is very common. So we cannot ignore that. The only thing is that the forecasting accuracy will improve. Here, R square is 12%. Earlier, it was only 3%. So this model may be better than previous. And one more thing. Whenever you run any model, let's say I started with MA2, AR1, MA1. I have to see one more thing that how the error, how the error term of it is looking. So I am developing the residual. This is the residual of model one. And uh, I will plot the chronogram of the residual. So still, you can see that the information is still there. In error term, information is, this information is not captured. So the model is not good. So it means the model, model should be modified. MA2. So we have to try different models. MA2 also. And uh, I know that R square increases, but I have to check still. Make residual series. This is for residual of ARMA 2.2. And make the chronogram of it. So you can see that still the information is not captured. So I have to take four also. So I'm improving the model by adding AR3, AR4, because up to four, the information is significant. Similarly, I can go to MA3, MA4. So now I'm modifying the model and we'll check the uh, this value, the R square and AIC. Now it is minus 2.7375. So it is decreasing. Now it is minus 2.83. It is 20%. So we can say this model is much better as compared to previous one. And I have to check the residual series of it. This is resid of pharma 4.4. And let's check the chronogram. So now you can see that we captured all the information. All these spikes are, le are less than the dotted lines. So almost for up to 10 lakhs, you can see all these spikes are within the range. So it means this model seems to be better. And second thing which you need to check is the unit to test of the error term. It must be stationary. Then you have to check the normality. Yeah, seems to be normal. Some outlets are there. Mean is almost zero. Fine. So this is the diagnostic te testing. Diagnostic testing means whether the error terms are having 
any information left or not. So we have seen in the cologram that there is no information left. So now we can see that this model is better. So we can now we can go to the forecast. After analyzing all these things, and AIC is also least minus 2.8583. It is minus, so it, if it increases, it means it is decreasing. Negative side. So I will try one more thing. Whether by adding AR5 and MA5, is there any significant change in AIC or R square or not? So it is again, it is uh, 23 and 20 to 23%, but slightly it is coming down. Earlier it was 2.83, now it is 2.84. Slight change is there. So there are so many permutation and combination we can do here. Now, after that, once you make your model, when you combine your model, suppose we finalize this model. We can try to six, seven, eight, nine, as it is not, not a problem. But somewhere you have to stop. So after doing this, highest R square 23%. This is lowest. And then we can go to the forecast. The Nifty forecast is, is now I'm giving a new name, Arima forecasting. So I am doing the Arima forecasting. The forecasting sample must be in the future. 22, 6. Dynamic forecast. A static forecast give you the next period value only. Dynamic forecast give you the long-term value. We don't want actual information in, in the series. And uh, so I think that's it. So we using this forecasting sample, doing the ARIMA forecasting. Okay. And now I want to show you the forecasted values. So we are having the ARIMA forecasting. Now this is ARIMA forecasting. This is Nifty. And we can go for uh, open as a group. Let's make the graph. So this is the value. This is the possible values of Nifty in the next eight years. So it, according to the ARIMA forecasting, it will cross 35,000. It will cross 35,000 in the value after eight years. So you can report this forecasted value by the graph. So red line is the actual behavior and blue line is representing you the forecasted behavior. So you can represent the forecasted behavior like this. And after You can, after this, you can combine all the forecasting, ARIMA forecasting, curve forecasting, growth forecasting, trend forecasting, and Nifty. So now I'm combining all the forecasting values. So these are the different forecasting values. So ARIMA forecasting is telling you this value. It is approximately 37,169. And uh, the least value is Minimum value is 20, 21,000 approximately. So three model says the forecasting values around 35,000. And uh, trend value is the least important model here. So these are the different type of forecasting models we can apply on any of these series. So in my example, I took the monthly data. You can took the um, in daily data, because volatility is very high, so forecasting may not be very, very accurate in case of daily data because of high volatility. So the purpose of forecasting is to get an average value, average possible value in the future. So what could be the average value in the future? Arima forecasting is very found to very accurate in case of demand forecasting, sales forecasting, so uh, economic forecasting. Anima forecasting is highly useful and applicable in the industry. And they are trying to predict the future value in the same way, which I'm going to tell you, which I explained. So this is 
the arima forecasting and uh, if you want to forecast for the next month you can do simple static forecasting okay so where is our equation yeah so we are having this equation and suppose you are interested in only next next value so you have to go for only thing is that you need to change the forecasting sample the forecasting sample is is july and let's say august so i want to forecast for the only next two period and it is static forecasting is static forecasting so forecasting sample you need to define as your sample period i am doing only one period forecast so the forecasted value on in the july is this and you can see in the arima static forecasting it will give you only single value for the next month in july the nifty can touch 16413 so this is the next month forecasted value for the nifty the average value of nifty which should be there so you can do the one period forecast and uh, dynamic forecast with the help of arima forecasting and uh, after that we should know some okay so this i have already clear there are some extensions of arima the analysts are using different softwares for these extensions like uh, any max model very max model so there are some other the modified forms of arima but only thing is that uh, you must have some x values to forecast you must have some independent variables to add into the arima forecasting to edit for example i'm just showing you one example of arimax let me close this equation yeah suppose i have this equation and i want to forecast for the next value of let's say gold so which kind of equation i will make let's see so it is a daily data so we are having the data up to 23 29 3 29 march 2019 from this so go to quick estimate equation so first of all you have to create some arima model and uh, let's say take two values and then you can take the d log nifty or d log uh, usd inr if you use this equation but this equation can be used for only static forecasting not the dynamic forecasting only one period forecast you can do so we are having the data up to 29th march this is the forecasting equation all the er and mr are significant so when you do forecasting only thing is that you have to increase only one day 30 and this is 30 3 so because i am doing only next day forecasting a static forecast gold so arimax model is only used for one day next forecasting
the software say that you have to increase the observation. So let me do that. Go to PROC, structure resize. So end date is now. Let me explain by undated. So we have 4046 observations. Now I'm adding 404, one more observation. So I'm adding one more observations, continue. Forecast. Okay, now the software will not take the dates. So one, two, four, zero, four, six observations. Four, zero, four, seven. Now I will forecast for four, zero, four, seven. Next period. Static forecast and okay. Okay, some problem is coming. Software is saying some missing data. Okay, so in this way, you can see the forecasted value of gold for the next day is this. The forecasted value you can see in the last. So the last value is showing you the forecasted value. In this way, you can do the forecasted with the help of some independent variables. So um, I hope you learn Arima forecasting today. And uh, if anything is left, so we can discuss in the discussion.